you know what that sound means. It's game time. For the first move, White decides to advance his king's bishop's pawn two squares. This is a move which is rarely used by the great masters because they are familiar with its defects. White's first move has a number of drawbacks. It makes the position of its king a bit insecure. Wait and see. And it does not help bring his pieces off the back line. Now it's Black's turn to move. He chooses to advance his king's pawn two squares. Black's move is a good one. He's advanced a center pawn, creating open lines for queen and bishop. One would now expect White to capture the black pawn. Instead, White decides to advance the king's knight pawn, one square. As anticipated, Black has captured the pawn. He is a much stronger player than his opponent, and consequently sees further ahead. White is now in very grave danger. Will he realize it? If he does, he can save himself from instant destruction. Lacking an understanding of this position, White carelessly recaptures the pawn. Now White has left himself in a hopeless state. Nothing can save him at this stage. Can you see White's blunder? He has exposed his king to a lethal attack. Black is about to place his far-ranging queen into position. This is a danger that White has overlooked. White's king is now in check, but note these points. White cannot capture the queen. He cannot move his king out of the line of attack. He cannot obstruct the line of attack. He is in checkmate. The game is over. This demonstrates very impressively the disastrous effects of neglecting the safety of your king. This is, of course, a particularly drastic example. As a rule, the effect of neglecting the king's safety is not felt until later in the game. For good players, automatic safeguarding of the king has become second nature. Soon, you will be introduced to an important device which greatly increases the king's security.